haven't even been on Silver Sea before? Mm -hmm. no. All right. Well, Silver Sea, we're an ultra luxury cruise line. We have nine ships total, five traditional smaller luxury ships, and then four expedition ships as well. And today we're here to talk about the expedition ships. We have um, the Galapagos, which I know, I'm very happy to say I just got back from the Galapagos. I went in December, and it truly is one of those fascinating trips. But let me just start off right now. If anybody's expecting a nice, relaxing vacation, this is not it, okay? <laughs> this is, you are going to be doing a lot of different things on this trip, but the adventurous, it's absolutely beautiful. When I say it's not relaxing, because usually you're off the ship by 8 o'clock, you're back on the ship by 11, and you'll have different choices of what you can do on the ship, and then at noon, the ship actually sails to another destination, and you're back off the ship at 2 o'clock, and then back home by 5 o'clock. So it's a really fun-filled day, and there's different levels of activities, so you don't want to do, you know, you don't want to do the strenuous walk you can do, you can out in for other things, because, you know, I mean, I love expedition cruising, and take a look at me, I'm not an outdoor guy, you can see that right away, that's just not my, you know, that's not my forte, I mean, I, I in the Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts, I've managed to avoid every camping trip there was. So, <laughs> yeah. so, but this is my kind of cruising. And uh, we have a couple of uh, my colleagues with me. We have Carl Kanzbada, who is the director of uh, expeditions for the East Coast. And then Oscar Dunn, who's actually going to be doing the presentation today. And Oscar has a pedigree when it comes to expedition. And he hates the fact that I use the word pedigree. But so I have to use it. So anyway, with that, he was actually born in the Galapagos. So that really does make him an expert. So I'm going to, here comes Oscar, and he's going to take it away. <laughs> like I said, Silver Sea, we are a luxury cruise line with some great expedition products on this Galapagos trip. You're going to have everything. The best thing is you come back, you have two hours of hiking. Now let me just phrase this too. It's two hours of hiking. It's not like you're in the army going to go for a march. You don't do that. Because you go for a 10 minute walk, the guy talks for 10 minutes, okay, let's go for another 10 minute walk. But you might be gone for two hours, but it's not like this. You know, so I just want it. You know, so we, we do it at your level, so you'll know. But when you come back on board, it's full still to see. Your butler's gonna be there, you know, it's that kind of service with a gentle dining, the best of both worlds. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I do have a pedigree, as John likes to say. I told him he doesn't get a haircut, everybody's going to think that's <laughs> <laughs> Well, I work on board the ships. Uh, I, I'm from Galapagos, a little bit about me, I'm from Galapagos, but I've been working for Silver Sea for, nine, for five years now. We started, or Silver Sea started expedition 10 years ago. We started with one ship. Right now we're going to go with our, our, we have four ships and in three years we we'll have our fifth ship. So it's growing very fast. Galapagos, we have been there since 2014. So pretty much we know what we're doing in the expedition industry. I started working with Secrecy five years ago and I've been around the world. <coughs> My long hair is because I arrived from Antarctica literally four days ago. I was expedition leader, so this is my vacations. Uh, well, I work on my vacations, I live in Miami now. But yeah, so pretty much that's the reason of my long hair and my beard and everything. Oh, and he always had some beard, don't <laughs> <laughs> But I'm going to tell you something about Galapagos. I know you want to go to Galapagos, I know you are quite interested. As John said, in Galapagos, in everywhere where we go, the expedition outside, and it's gonna, I'm going to be very honest, animals are going to be there for everybody. Like it's not that you're going to see one animal or different animals with one company or the other. But what makes us very special is the service you come back on board. One thing is you come back on board and you have only one restaurant. The other thing is that you come back on board, the bartender knows you, and your favorite drink is going to be waiting for you right there. Or they're going to have a glass of champagne waiting for there every day, every second. And the best part is that you don't have to pay for that. It's already paid. So you don't have to take care of... These are real vacations. You don't have to take care of ooh, how much I'm I'm spending on this whiskey or this uh, champagne or this uh, food, whatever. Everything is included, so you don't have to pay anything extra. 
Those are real vacations. It's a very hard, I, I'll be honest, I took $1,000 with me when I went to the Galapagos. And I came home with like $960. Because it really, there's no people there. So guess what? You can't spend any money. <laughs> Well, the, 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 the last day, you're actually in a town, and there's actually some place to buy some stuff. But it's really that every other port you go into, there's nothing there. It's just sort of. But I will tell you this now, and I'm, I'm getting off the subject, but oh well. But anyway, um, one place you will go to on this, which I really recommend everybody to, and doesn't take addresses with you. There's a place on this trip that you're going to go to Post Office Island, and Post Office Island is a mailbox, and you put whatever you want to be sent into that mailbox with an address on it. And now you also, when you open that mailbox, there's going to be postcards in there. You take one or two with you that you can personally deliver. And this goes back hundreds and hundreds of years when the sailing ships used to call there, when the sailing ships would be there, and they had no other way to get mail back home. So they would, if you were going to London, you had something going to somebody, the ship before you could have dropped it, or you were going to China, but that's the way it worked. It's a really very cool little system. But Post Office Island, remember that. So the only reason I'm mentioning that is bring the addresses with you, because I didn't. So. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start the presentation, and please, if you have any questions or something, just don't wait until the end, or just tell me, ask me, and we can go through it. So what makes Sirius special, as I told you, we are in the Olympus with butlers, everything's included, Wi-Fi, drinks, food, everything. So you don't have to take care of anything extra. Uh, the air, I know the air is also included right now, uh, all the way through Galapagos. So pretty much the whole package, it's closed. So you don't have to take care of anything, you just go to the airport and then you have to just enjoy it. We are the only ones that we have really butlers <laughs> In Ecuador, not, not all the hotel, so we seriously introduced what it's butler service in Ecuador. And our butlers, they have been working around the world, they, they have to be from Galapagos. All the, the employees from Cyprus and Galapagos, they have to be from Ecuador, and 90% of them, they have to be born in Galapagos. So they have to be, be Galapagos, that means they're from Galapagos. So, of course, as there's, there was no industry, there, nobody knew. What was to be a butler? What Silversy did quite like a <coughs> university, they sent these people across the fleet to the class fleet, expedition fleet around the world, and now they're back in Galapagos. So they have it's the same standards, the same service standards as they were around the world. So pretty much that's what and the same with the chefs. They went outside, they worked outside, so they come back and now they know how to do, for example, a nice ceviche like the one you're having right now. To be honest, it was very good. Yeah. yeah, it was very okay. That's what you can have pretty much every day or any other day in Galapagos. The ship will have a, it's 100 passengers or 100 guests. It's the biggest ship you can have in Galapagos, no more than 100. But we can go to all the places as the same as small ships. So there is no problem having a small, a big ship or a small ship. We have the biggest ratio between crew members and uh, guests, almost one to one. And one thing I know, if you have been checking the internet or whatever, there are some 20 passenger ships, 60 or 100. The good thing about being in a big ship, first of all, you won't be, it won't be crowded. So everybody, we're going to divide it in small groups, and every group we're going to do different activities. But you have a lot of guides on board. Our guides have nine guides, so pretty much it's 11, 11 guests, per, no, 12 guests per uh, each guy. If you go in a small ship, you will only have one guy. So imagine, if you don't like that guy, mm -hmm. you're stuck with him the whole voyage. <laughs> you can't stop in the middle saying, I want a new one. <laughs> with us, you can have, you can choose a different guy if you want. Our guides are specialists, they are, they work for the Galapagos National Park, they are ornithologists, historian, marine biologists, they have all kind of expertise. And they will be giving lectures, they're going to be walking, doing the hikes with you, so they're cruising with you, they're going to be all having dinner with you. So it's not only going there and taking pictures, it's also coming back and knowing a little bit of history, knowing a little bit of why the behaviors of the animals of each island, they change from one to the other, or why the turtles in one island, they have 
the, the sound on the back is different from the other, even though it's the same species. And it's because of the trees were higher, or they didn't have to, to say to be, to be, to be safe from the, to be safe from the, the predators. So pretty much all those things you're going to learn once you are there by your specialist on board. This is a short movie, well, a video of secrecy, so you're going to have an idea of what you're going to be doing in Galapagos for seven days. That's a ship, <laughs> and that's a vacation day. And you will see, since the beginning, you use the Soviets, those are the Soviets. And that's how you arrive on board, in the glass of champagne. That's how we receive you on board the day you come from the, from the plane. There's no ports in Galapagos, so it's always using the solid. You will always use the solid to get in and out of the ship. But again, it's all about wildlife. It's Galapagos, it's getting really close to wildlife. This has a veranda, not all of them have a veranda, but yes, it's very nice suites. This is a silver suite, it's a bigger one, more than 400 square feet, that also with a veranda, that it can accommodate, for, it's for three, like a, it's a triples. So it's very nice, the, all the inside part is the Explorer Lounge. Every day you have a recap and briefing after your activities, you're going to come back on board, have a drink, have some tapas, and the expedition leader will tell you what's going to happen next day. If it's going to be a, a dry landing, a wet landing, that means you have, you're going to get wet, getting out of the zodiacs, or it's going to be dry. At what time you have to wake up, at what time it's going to be breakfast, and all the, all the options that you have, so you can choose whatever you want to do. You don't have to go online and book anything. All the excursions are included, so you don't have to pay anything extra, and you, have to, you decide the day before what you want to do. You have to go right down line, or just you just have to relax and enjoy. We have two dining options, three dining options, two restaurants. One is the inside, so this is quite a formal one. By formal, I mean our dress code is very relaxed. The only thing we highly recommend, if you ever have dinner in this restaurant inside, no shorts. The rest so basically dance is what often formal is considered on this. Yes. 
a, a t-shirt. Yes. So, yeah, that's all but I, I do want to say one thing about the food and about some of the different things of Galapagos. Um, like every piece of meat that comes into the Galapagos has to be from Ecuador, and it has to be cooked. They do not let. You see them with them. I want a very easy out. thing to do. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so remember that because it, it, you know, like the meat's fine, but it's going to be like an outback style, more outback rather than root cuts because we can't do it. Even the wines on board, they all have to be South American. Great wines from Chile and Argentina, but if you have a favorite Bordeaux, unfortunately we cannot do that. Even the um, soap on board on all our other ships, it's um, Ferragamo or Bulgari on here. It's a local Ecuadorian source soap for environmental reasons. So it's a lot of different things. And even the bottle of wood, there's, you're not going to get a bottle of wood. You're going to actually get a flask that the bottle will fill up for you. There's going to be stations along. Uh, in on the ship for you to fill it up as well, but basically they don't want any plastic left on the island, yeah. so that's why we do that. So I just want to be, you know, it's all because these are the rules of the Galapagos. Therefore, I highly recommend you have the ceviche and the fresh seafood every day. Yeah, the steak, there's something with the steak, for example, it has to be sourced from mainland, and when it goes to Galapagos, it has to be seared. It can be totally Raw because of bacteria and all the. We're trying to save Galapagos and we're trying to keep everything, all the invasive things outside. So, pretty much that's the reason. Therefore, the steak won't be the fresh one, the most fresh steak that you ever had. It's very good. But I highly recommend having local food or local seafood, which it's, to be honest, it, it, it really was very good. And the steak, the meat was okay, and but again, we're dealing with those. Rules, but the fish is fantastic. Over the top. Oh, the lobster as well. Yes, yes. You can have more lobster, more shrimp, and more chicken. <laughs> then this is the grill. So we have two, two restaurants: the inside one and the outside. The outside we have also something called hot rocks that you will see here, and it's we serve the food, raw food, on a hot lava rock, and we heat it to 400 degrees, and then you can finish cooking the pieces in front of you. Steak, lobster, salmon, or all of the above. You can, it's all inclusive, so you can ask servantor, you can ask more lobster, more salmon, whatever you want. So it's going to be whatever you want, and you can finish. So it's a nice experience. It's a great experience. And you don't want to do it, the, buff, the waiter will do it for you. You don't want to flip it over, he will do it for you. But it's a really a lot of fun. That's part of the fun, yeah. the, the steak. Yeah. Yeah. And you can say, I cook dinner. If you ate there every night, you can say, I cook dinner every night. <laughs> they made us cook dinner one of these. So this is a grill outside. They, they really, it's open for lunch and uh, dinner. And it's a nice, it's a fresco, it's outside, it's quite nice. If you have a nice day, you come back from the beach, you don't want to change to go have dinner, uh, lunch inside. You can just stay here, have a nice day outside, ceviche, something fresh, and then get ready for your afternoon activities. So it's quite a nice uh, place to stay and go around. As I told you, we have our exper experts on board, they have to be Ecuadorian, they have to be from the Galapagos National Park. Uh, we offer a lot of activities, we have the highest uh, or the, the biggest expedition team, therefore we can have a lot of activities from, for our guests. Long hikes, short hikes, we have a kayaking, a beach combing, so pretty much whatever you want to do, you can just choose your, you can decide and then just do it. Uh, we have always one photographer and videographer on board, so after your, your cruise is finished, you will have one, you have a presentation with the, with the movie. It's going to be a 45 minute movie that it's going to be filmed every day with you on board. So pretty much you will see sometimes yourself walking or doing something, <laughs> and also a CD with 300 to 500 uh, still pictures. Also, no stock pictures, all the photos are taken in that voyage. So the photographer will go with you, you will see him or her walking with you, taking pictures, going around. So it's a great, great or a nice memory to take back home if you want. That's our Zodiacs, and a lot of people, I don't know, how many of you have been on board a Zodiac? Zodiac. You know, it's quite easy, safe, 
a lot of people they tend to think it's unsafe or they don't feel safe getting in and out. It's quite safe, it's very easy. That was my that has been my office in the last four years. And I want to show you this. This is a guest getting on board the sodium, and then you have one, two, three, and four staff members helping the guest getting in and out. So pretty much we can carry you and put you into the sodium <laughs> for us. And I have to I have to interrupt and ask for you one second. I went to the Arctic two years ago, and on this Arctic cruise, the woman sitting next to me turns to her husband and says, you know, it really is the easiest thing to get in and out of these zodiacs. And the husband says, that's because they've been carrying you in and out. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite easy, it's safe, it will help us to get to all the places we want to go, very close to wildlife, and you will see some of the photos that I have. And they're it's, quite comfortable too. Yeah, they're very they are comfortable. very comfortable. Well, that's the reason we put, it's quite hot, so that's the reason we put this cloth, see the blue one, so you won't be burning anything once you get on board the sun. Yeah. Once we go to the landing set, as you can see, the ship is always closed, so when we do separation, it's only a two minute ride, five minutes ride the most from the ship to any place and this is the kind of activity so we offer snorkel activities kayaking a lot of activities but this is snorkel in one beach this is uh, Isabella and you can see we give all the equipment so pretty much you don't have to take care of anything we give the equipment we give wetsuits the water can be a bit a little bit cooler than you think even though it's equator line even though it's hot outside but the water, we have the absolute from Antarctica. So it's going to be a little bit cold. It's going to be 65. Is it 65 Fahrenheit? Yeah. I know in Celsius, sorry. But I don't use Fahrenheit. 64 when I was there last night. But yeah, between 6 and 65 uh, degrees. So it can be a little bit cold. I highly recommend if you can buy the rush cards, those long sleeve t shirts. Sometimes ruin the water because it's cold, you won't feel it, but you're going to be burning your back from the sun because your body will, temperature will be low and you won't feel that. You will feel that at night when you're out there or taking the shower you're gonna be crying. So I highly recommend those long sleeve t-shirts and that's the reason we offer also the, the web more than the cold it's because of the sun. And one other thing I'll tell you to buy um, is water shoes but good water shoes and I'm, when I say that not like the little slippy ones from Walmart, all, but you know, but like a decent pair with, with a sole on it because very often you get out of the zodiac, it will be a wet landing. There's really no place to change unless you want to sit on the beach and try and change into hiking shoes or sneakers. So I had water shoes on for probably three hikes and they were fine, but they were decent water shoes. Okay, so yeah, they have to be water shoes or sneakers as well. Yeah, no, but, but if you can't get out of the zodiac oh. in the it, and then you cannot just walk into the zodiac with bare foot, with bare feet, or flip flops. So you need something. So decent water shoes, 110. And you know, and it's funny. I bought mine in the uh, outdoor world. They're only 45 dollars, but what it, it looked like a sneaker, but it was a big difference because they had a sole. Yeah, in Galapagos, I went back to the water shoes. In Galapagos, everything is lavarons, and it's very sharp. So you don't want those thin. Lava shoes, no thin water shoes. They, they, you need a strong like sole or just yes, one of those uh, the Tiba, not Tiba, it's a uh, King, the open open water shoes King guys. So yeah, what is the activity? It's snorkeling, so pretty much you can get really close to wildlife. You can have a, a lot of experience underwater, and sometimes underwater life wildlife will come very close to you. Seals, sea lions, so they're very playful. You're gonna enjoy being underwater, having fun with them. They're gonna make, you're gonna start throwing bubbles out of your, your mouth, and they're gonna do the same. They're gonna follow you. So it's a nice experience. Don't get afraid, they are harmless. The same with this kind of dinosaur underwater. It's a marine one. As John always says, you have a lot of them here in Florida. But you never, you haven't had the black iguana or the marine one that makes it very special. So it's a nice experience where you can just enjoy one day at the beach, relaxing, having fun, a little bit of sun, like the seals, like the seal lions there. So 
You can be one of them more or less. You can ask for some space. You are going to go to this island. It's Española. Well, it's a, in the north central itinerary. For me, this is the best. My favorite island is this one, Española. It has two of the biggest of the best points for me. One is this. It's called Garter Bay. It's one of the few white sand beach in Galapagos. And you can find this, all the seals, the sea lions, laying one next to the other. You can do some snorkeling, you can see here, that's a, a zodiac. You can go towards that little rock. There are some sharks, uh, white deep sharks there. They're vegetarians, they won't eat you. But yes, it's, it's a nice experience. Also, the other part uh, you find here, the albatross. Uh, the wave albatross, that's the only place where they nest. It's the only nesting place. Uh, and you'll find more than 10,000 birds right there nesting. The dance they have is beautiful when they start mating. So it's for me that's the reason it's one of the best islands we have in Galapagos. It's also Española called the oldest island. It's the it's a farthest from the hot spot where all the Galapagos are. It's growing. So pretty much it's called the dead island, and it's therefore it's a black island. Beautiful, beautiful place. Activities, as I told you, kayak, we have uh, eight kayaks for two people, so pretty much there's activities for everybody. If you want a chance, you can ask for reception or expedition leader when you want to do a kayak, and then they will reserve one for you. But it's a lot of fun. It's, you can get really close to the wildlife, close to the shoreline, so it's a nice, nice way of also doing it. Sadly, you can take your partner, and he won't be able to paddle for you. That's the only bad, that's the bad news. This one you have to do by yourself. Then we have some overland tours where we go to the highlands, either as a crystal or a cruise, for the, to see the, the sanctuary of the turtles, the turtles, or when they are in the wild as well. So pretty much that's the only way, the only reason you take the overland tour for half a day. But again, all this is included. You don't have to take care of anything extra. You don't have to pay anything. And again, some beautiful views from Bartolomé, the Pinnacle Rock is quite famous for Galapagos. Then, then you go all the way up, you get very hot, it's very, very hot, and then you go down and have a nice, refreshing bath in this, it's a golden beach. So it's very nice. Usually, most of the paths in Galapagos have this, it's a path, as you can see, it's a marked path, and they have these kind of wooden sticks so you won't get out of the places. But why not it's they I always say they never arrived, they never went to the to that class, so they sometimes they just start nesting in the middle of the path. And you have to go around. So you have a sea lion just laying there with a the cup right in front of you and you have to go around. But I think that's part of the experience, it's part of one of those things that Galapos still it's quite a virgin place. So the animals they are not afraid of you. You can get really close. Of course, we highly recommend not to get that close, but they are totally unaware of you. They, they won't be scared of you. They, they won't said, move for nothing. I mean, they, no, no. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> because they don't know anything, like they're not afraid of you. Yeah, believe it or not, they don't think we have the right of way. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the craters. This is a Espanol, a Santiago Island. And again, it's, as I told you, it's all lava rocks, it's lava fields. It's more than corals, we don't have corals, it's all lava. So it's nice, amazing uh, scenery like this one, but it's a crater, and you can just walk around it. Or this is getting, again, Bartolomé to the highest part of the pinnacle rock and with the ship on the back. So the zodiacs, they will allow us to get very close to wildlife. Uh, we have the driver, and then we have the guy there who will be explaining anything about wildlife, we see uh, blue fruit boobies, red fruit boobies, or any animal on the rocks. And here, for example, that's a rock, and that's blue fruit boobies with a little uh, sea lion. So, pretty much, we can get really close to shallow places, to get everywhere. We have a, a mangrove where we can go into the mangrove as well. So, we use the Sodex for every activity of the day. And it's just quiet. Again, okay, it's Amazing wildlife everywhere. As you can see, the iguanas, I know you have them here, but 
it's the same iguana as a as the marine iguana, the black iguana, but it's how evolution changed the animals and the DNA of the animals millions of years ago and how they survived in this place in Galapagos. So it's amazing how they are all changed, how the red footed booby is different from the blue footed booby. It's something that it's like going and watching one of these documentaries, but just in this case, you are going to be there, you're going to be in front of all this while it happens. So, yes, it's all wildlife. You, it's the highlands of the island where you go and you see the turtles on the, when they are on the wild walking across the, the fields and you can just walk through them or stay very close to them. This is also a, from some of my photos that I really love them and this is one of my favorites. <laughs> I think that's my, you know, right. my favorite photo. That's a the marine one with a little Egg on top. <laughs> so it's that's what you're gonna see. This is what you're gonna experience in Galapagos. A lot of wildlife, a lot of activities, activities outside, always outside. Or people will help you get it in and out. Is the lava. So sometimes if it's very sharp, we're gonna put some towels. It won't be slippery. But yes, you have to get out of the zodiac and then in this. This is what we call a dry land. You have to go into the water. It's also a dry landing. So there's a, a rock with towels, and then you, you will go out of the zodiac and start your walk through the paths of the Galapagos. Mm -hmm. We have, you're going to, well, we're, we're doing about the North Central itinerary, so it's starting in Baltra, from <coughs> St. Cristobal, seven day. We have a little bit more of hiking, so it's going to be, a, you know, one day that it's a, in Espanola, a little hike around the island, but a little hike is going to be 45 minutes. <coughs> Again, it's not, that you have us to go running, you can stop. We're gonna be we're gonna divide the ship in, in a lot of groups. So pretty much you can do your own pace. You can save if you would like more birds. You can stay two hours, three hours taking photos. If you just want to scroll around, take photos, and then go back on board for have a caipirinha or more ceviche, then you can just walk around and then go back. There's always shuttles between the ship and the shore. So as soon as you're ready. You can be asked, asked to go back. If you forgot your camera or something, you just, there's going to be always somebody to take you back on board anytime you want. Uh, then, yeah, it's great for bird watching. You're going to see all the visit area, you're going to see all the animals, uh, all the beautiful boobies, red food boobies, and you can struggle and have fun with sea lions. That's all on my side. I don't know if you have any questions or something. Yes. A friend of ours has been there and yeah. they absolutely endured it, but she told me two things. To be very careful, mm -hmm. the sun that you can burn very, very easily. So she suggested that we go prepare for that with lotion and the shirts and everything and hats. And also she said the water was very cold. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, what's your name? Donna. Donna is told me that a friend of hers, she went to Galapagos and the two bad things about Galapagos were the sun and the water. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. And yeah, and again, as I told you, we are in the equator line and therefore the sun strikes directly. So there is no shade. If there is no shade, the sun can be very harmful. Uh, and that's the reason I told you, better if you wear a wetsuit or something when you're in the water. And the, the, the reason Galapagos is we have all this variety of animals. It's because of all the the currents we'll meet in Galapagos, from the north, from the south, from the west. So that's the reason. And the, 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 the bigger or the predominant current is the one coming from the Humboldt current from the south, from Antarctica, and that's the reason of the cold waters. So and we have the upswell. Once it hits, the the islands go all the way down. So once it hits the other water part of the islands, it will go up. So we have a lot of nutrients, therefore we have a lot of animals, and that's why we Galapagos is so rich of nutrients and whales and humpback whales and shark whales because of all the nutrients we have around. Uh, that's why we have the penguins as well. It's the only northern, the only penguin north of the equator line because of the water is a little bit cooler than any other place. So yes, that's true. The, the water can be very very cold. That's why we also offer. Wetsuits. So if you feel a little bit colder, 
you can just use your words. Yes. No. They get up the shoulder, please. The only rough, we call it rough seas compared to what it's the rest of the year, but it's in, October, in November, uh, pretty much in November, the swell changed the direction. It's not rougher, but it uh, changed the direction. So we call the damp swell, the damp wave. It, it, the ship will move, instead of moving like this, it will start moving like sideways. It's only a couple of weeks, three weeks, but it's not. It's not rough. When you're when you're sailing, you actually can see land the whole time, so you're never that far, yeah. You're never that far away from land. Is there any diving for certified divers? Is there any diving? Not not with us. Not. In, there's a lot of restrictions in Galapagos. Uh, if you want to dive, I highly recommend go a couple of days before or stay a couple of days after. Nobody will offer diving. No cruise company will offer diving. Uh, with these kind of activities. It's either you dive, there's, there's some ships that are specialized diving ships that you can leave aboard, it's a leave, leave aboard ships for one week or six, five days, but they are, they are not combinable to these kind of activities. So either you do this, or, or either we can offer this, or we can offer only diving. So, but with us, no, you can't uh, offer diving. Uh, it says you only spent $60 or something like that. Does that mean there's not a casino on board? <laughs> <laughs> that means that he lost his money in the casino. No, no, yeah. there, 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 is no, there is no casino on board. The, and the gift shop basically consists of some display windows that if you want to buy a t shirt or a hat, you can. But so basically, so there's really nothing else. Because except for the one town we got to, where there was actually which was the last day of our cruise, which you could actually buy some stuff. There's, there's no people living on the island, so there's no way to spend money. You really would have to be very, um, it would, it's really hard to find a place to spend money. You know, unless you're buying, unless that last day you're going to buy every thing on that island, but otherwise, you know. Yeah. Did they just catch you there? No, 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 it's only the No, 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 well, no, no, in the town, in the, there's two big towns. I know that because it was a <laughs> That's what his father thinks. <laughs> but that's it. But no, so there's two towns that actually have some stores, because um, one of the towns is where you go to the turtle farm, and then you go to the Darwin Research Center after the turtle farm, and then you, you can walk back to the town. You know, I might say I spent forty dollars. Joanne, I don't know what she spent on her credit card because she did. I'm like, really? I'm like, there's like nothing, you know. But <laughs> so there are three places that people live in Galapagos. Wait for a question. One is southern part of Isabela. There is a resort that it's the capital of the Galapagos Island, and then the biggest is Puerto Ayora. So that's the biggest kind of a town. In total, it's thirty thousand people living in Galapagos. I would say 28,000, 30 here, no, sorry, 40,000. 30,000 will be living in Puerto Ayora, 8,000 in San Cristobal, and then 2,000 in Puerto Villamil, that is here in Isabela. Uh, those are the three towns that people live. And yes, you can either buy something when you go to Puerto Ayora or when you go to San Cristobal. There are two airports, one is in Baltra, and the other is in San Cristobal. Baltra, as you can see here, it's a runway and nothing else. It was a army airport, army a U.S. Army base for many many years, and now we only have the runway and the airport. So you get out of the plane and you literally you walk 20 minutes to the well, 10 minutes to the bus after you go get your suitcases. A bus will be waiting for you. It's a five minute ride to a uh, a little port. Little, it's a port basically. When I say that, that would be, yeah. and it's one place you don't want to miss the bus because there's no <laughs> there's, no, there's no Uber, there's no nothing. Yeah, so, yeah it's a desert island. <clears throat> That's reason we do the whole package. Then we take you here. A sorry, will be waiting for you, and then you will be into the ship right away. And then the other town, the towns that you can go out and buy something, will be Puerto Ayora, 
y por tu Cristo Moreno y San Cristóbal. So pretty much that's when you can when you can spend your in while and spend your money <laughs> buying something. Or eh, more. Por Moreno. San Cristóbal. Eh, so yes, those are the only two places that you can really do something, some shopping. On board the ship, we don't have any entertainment. There's no casino. There's no singers. We have one piano player. He thinks he's a singer sometimes. He doesn't sing very well. Uh, but mainly because, as John said, this is not Bikini Martini. It's quite active. So and sometimes guests, they come on board and they tell me, okay, where is the bar? Where is the, the casino? We do have bars. Yeah, we have bars. <laughs> but it's like, where is the casino? Where is the, the disco? Like, there's nothing. Like, I'm gonna be bored the third day. The third day I have dinner with them. Like, okay, you wanna go to the bar? I'm like, no, we're gonna have to wake up at six. <laughs> I have to sleep. So it's pretty much like that. It's quite happy. So yes, you're gonna be tired every afternoon. It's perfect for me. And the timing, so you get back on board, you have dinner, you go, you have, if you want, you have a drink, and then you are sleeping by 9 p.m. Next morning, you are active again around seven. You're outside, so it's yeah. It's, and the ship, it's a very friendly atmosphere on board. When you get on board, you are going to. There's only a hundred people. All of a sudden, you sit down with somebody else. Everyone knows everyone because everyone goes from the zodiac. You sit down next to somebody on the zodiac. You might not have known them before, and you just have conversations. By the end of the week, everybody knows everybody because it's such a small environment. <laughs> yeah, we found out that most of our new people going to expedition are from river cruisers. Like a lot of people that they like river cruisers, they go because it's the same experience more or less. Also, we have, as I didn't mention, we have a small gym. So if you are still, you have energy, you can go to the gym if you want. Uh, and if you don't have that much energy, you can go across the, the, the gym and there's a spa where you can have a yeah, massage. You can have a massage. The massage is the spa is usually kept busy. Yeah. The gym you can roll a bubble. <laughs> so, <laughs> sure. So the double occupancy see prices like explorers and least expensive is that kind of every every everything is a suite on the ship. So when we say suite Silver Seed has no cabins, everything is a suite. I can tell you, I was just on, and I was in the Explorer Suite, which is the lowest price suite. Um, it probably had one of the biggest walk-in closets I've ever had on a ship. But there's actually a sleeping area, there's a sofa, and there's a full mall there. It's actually quite large, it's close to 300 square. The Explorer Suite is one of the biggest suites that we have. It's the price is the lowest because it's in deck number three. So therefore, like real estate, if you are higher, you pay you know, more. The Explorer Suite is actually a very good, because when you go above that, you get a window, but the thing is, there's a little deck above you, but the ship is still the same width. So while you have that extra width, when you're in the Explorer, especially on deck two, it's, it's just a bigger suite than what you would get on deck three. On deck three, on deck three. Deck three. I was on deck two. Deck three, rather. Right. But basically on the lowest, yeah. You've done that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have, you, you have TV, you have Wi Fi service as well. And I'm going to tell you something that I'm not supposed to say. Um, yeah, don't say <laughs> Okay. On all of our ships, we offer one hour complimentary per person per day Wi Fi service. But now I just came from the Galapagos. And on that ship at this point, it is 24 7. So you would have Wi Fi 24 7. So keep that in mind. And you do have full TV, and when I say it's cable, but you have Fox News, CNN, probably 10 movie channels, and, you know. Okay. Internet, don't expect to download movies or videos. It's, it's just to say, I'm right, I'm fine, or send a couple of emails. But yeah, for social media, it's not that, that, that good. So that's all, but yeah, it's free to, all the time, so it's open and, and therefore, yeah, you can use it. Yes. <laughs> but you don't have to turn the TV on, but the TV is a big one. 
And it's a decent sized flat screen TV. So, and but on the on the in the suites again, it's full surface TV. So you'll still have Pratisi linens in the suite. You have your zip mattresses, which means it can be the uh, double bed or two twins. You also have um, it can be a one side can be soft and one side can be firm. So even if you know your husband and wife, one likes a soft mattress, one likes a firm mattress, you can do it and still have the double bed. So again, it's all full speed amenities. Served by your butler. There will be a bar set up in the room to your liking. When I say to your liking, you whatever wine you like, whatever spirits you like, you just tell your butler and he will put it into your suite with the mixes and everything. Um, some of them do, others have just shadows. Most of them just have a shadow. Yeah, because well, okay. Well, I'll put it in the, the closet was big enough that it was, not that there's a mattress, but you probably could have slept in there. I'm not kidding. And your father will put a mattress in your closet. Yes, so you will conform to whatever you want. Okay. Put him out. Put him out. transportation to the airport. We have your, your flights included. We have transportation home, all of your crews, everything is included. And this is round trip transportation to and from the airport is included from Roseboro. George will not be going on it with me. I'm going, Aurora is not going on it with me. So Aurora went to South Africa with me. She's a pretty well-traveled little child. Um, but they will not be going with me. I'm actually going, and my father is going. We are the two wildlife enthusiasts in our family, and this was a trip that we could not miss for the life of us. So this is mine and my dad's trip that we're going on together. So I would absolutely love for all of you to join me on this trip because we're going to have a lot of fun, and we're going to see some amazing wildlife. There's one other thing as well, because I was asked about pricing. We do have a payment in full with this group that I know it's last, by February 28th, we do pay in full. It's a 10% discount. So you're, you're bringing it down to about a $7,000 flat rate. Right? So you don't have to pay it in full, but that gives you the best bang for your buck. It essentially pays for your travel insurance if you want to purchase travel insurance. Right. And that's one other thing, long as you brought up travel insurance, I'm going to bring it up. Every one of you will need travel insurance, because as of May 1, you probably don't even this yet. Oh, I just learned this in the last week. May 1, Ecuador is requiring everyone entering Ecuador to provide proof of health insurance. And that does not mean just like a little ID card, that means you need a piece of paper that says you have health insurance from A to B. You know, so. But again, if you are, if you own health insurance, like my company health insurance, that should be worldwide, that policy is fine. But you do need group health insurance. It is a requirement. Mm -hmm. So Tiffany, Tiffany, will you wait for me again? So Tiffany will be in the office tomorrow. I know that we have some people who are very interested in joining the group. Tiffany will be in the office tomorrow. And she will take appointments right now if you want to even tell her, I'll call you or be by at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m. She'll make some uh, appointment times. I will be out of the country. I'm going to Kenya tomorrow. So, <laughs> so I know. Rough, rough leave here. And so um, Tiffany will be the one that is helping everybody until I return. I'll be back on um, March 6th into the office. But I'll be the one going on the trip, and I would love for you to join me. All right, any other questions? All right, well, have a great evening. Thank you for joining us. And if you didn't take the ceviche, try ceviche. It's very good.